people are going from early from TikTok to YouTube Shorts. Just yeah, it's much easier and better to get your shorts monetized, get your content monetized on YouTube. YouTube has the experience. TikTok doesn't. Um, with YouTube, you can uh, also post long form content, build your audience. So I think 2023 will be a, a big battle between YouTube and TikTok. And yeah, I'm going to place my bets on YouTube for sure. Uh, but that's a good thing for us. And uh, I think it's uh, the upcoming months, uh, it, it's good to prepare for, for shorts, how you can use it in your own strategy with your own channel. I also saw some questions uh, this week. If, if you should uh, place your shorts on, this, on your main channel or your long form content channel, uh, yeah, as you may know question. now, like it doesn't matter. YouTube is implementing shorts, it's there to stay. Uh, shorts are bridged now with long form content. So if you're still unsure if you should upload your shorts on your main channel, just do it, test it out. It will be much easier to reach a wider, wider audience. Uh, it will be much easier to get more subscribers in. Those subscribers will see your long form content. Also, the people that don't subscribe but check your short video will also get recommended your uh, long form content. So it's a win win overall. Uh, the only downside maybe now is like it looks very ugly in your YouTube channel. Like you have like long, nice looking thumbnails that with your long form content and the shorts in between. But I'm sure YouTube will is fixing it up and probably in, will uh, in no will time make some sort of tab. I know on mobile, the mobile app, there's already uh, a tab made, so it's it's uh, separated from each other but not yet on desktop, but those are like small things. Yeah. So if you're not implementing shorts yet, I think you're leaving something on the table here. Uh, so think about it. And especially in the Discord community, we're going to focus on it a lot um, since in 2023, I think uh, like a lot of money can be made and also it will be a lot easier to start growing a YouTube channel from scratch because you can bring in the audience through shorts and then maybe transition them to uh, the long form content and start growing your business uh, through YouTube shorts first and then go over to long form content to get more revenue in. Because I do think the revenue on long form content will be long. And, if, and, if, and if I can add to that as well, like don't take it from us. I mean, who is the biggest YouTuber there? Okay, yeah. Mr. Beast. I sent this week, I don't know if you guys seen it, I sent a podcast um, Mr. Beast did with uh, on the Full Send podcast. So I don't know if you guys yeah. seen it. Highly recommend, it's like two hours, but it's really good. And on minute 58, specifically, they started talking about YouTube Shorts and Oh boy, does Mr. Beast is planning to go hard on these shorts. Yeah. He he wants to ramp up to one short per day, and you know the Mr. Beast quality. That's going to be like crazy stuff. And he's literally like he is saying the exact same things that we were saying last week on the mastermind and everything that we're talking here. How they're going to fix the UI, how like TikTok is in big trouble, how uh, the monetization is now like people are literally just like sleep, like everyone is sleeping on this. I swear yeah. to God, everyone is sleeping yeah, on now. this. But I, I do, slowly, we, we will uh, see, I think more people moving because like it, it's, uh, the creators will probably follow the money and the monetization in YouTube is just much, much better. And I think, yeah, also much higher. It will be at least higher than the YouTube Shorts Fund. That's what YouTube also set themselves. So it's a big step step up for, uh, for Mar mark our words beginning of 2023 when people start seeing consistent or like proper monetization on their shorts that's when you will see real competition uh that's when you will see real competition yeah, Ethan, it could end up like snapchat but i think still snapchat is still a pretty big player i think but snapchat you see snapchat doesn't have the uh the monetization yeah, they, like uh, you, like like they YouTube. Program. But I, 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 I'm not that familiar with it. I'm not familiar uh, with Snapchat as well. But at least I, I'm sure they don't have as many uh, viewers as as YouTube. So that that's one thing that's for sure. And plus, and ex also, experience. Uh, the thing is with, with YouTube, you can build your, you can send your audience to long form content. You can build a proper audience, and you can send that audience to whatever you like. And that's much difficult on Snapchat, for example, because it's a, the, the app is used differently. Um, but let's get into the shorts. Uh, like I, I'm going to share some uh, some strategies and some key elements that are important to get like some decent views on your uh, on your YouTube shorts. That's basically what we all want, of course. 
Do you, um, do you want to start with the wheel? Oh yeah, that, let's first start off with the wheel because like we're ten minutes in. So if the if the if the people are not here yet, then uh, search for them. But yeah, let's, uh, yeah, let's start off with the wheel. I'm going to share my screen. All right, this is exciting stuff. I see. What's your name? Ya Jacopo is smiling. Let me know, uh, <laughs> Yeah, Jacopo. Jacopo. Hey, hello, everyone. Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. Hello. Hey, you. Can everyone see the wheel? Hell yeah, I can see the wheel, bro. Okay. So I put in the 22 names, I think, um, that replied on the announcement last week. Um, maybe you see your name in there, maybe not. If if we have a name and that person is not in the mastermind, we will spin it again until we get the right person that's in the mastermind. Because I think it's important when you're joining us in this journey, you at least need to be dedicated to join the mastermind. Uh, that's, I think, the least we can ask for. Ron, where is my name? <laughs> And it's not here, uh, George. Oh, where's my name? <laughs> I think if we do put your names on the guys, it's not so believable. So I want this to be completely transparent. All those names, like, I don't know. Add Ethan. Add Ethan. He said he missed the announcement. Oh, more people missed it? Imagine, Im imagine, imagine we add Ethan now last second and he gets it. Yeah, but <laughs> please read the announcement because you need at least a budget of like 150 a month because we need to get some freelancers in. Yeah, I think I think Ethan probably. Let's see. I can't. I can't. Yeah, just, just add him. Yeah, is he okay? I, I can't see the chat because I'm in a, in a spinning wheel. Oh, nothing in the chat. But we will assume that Ethan has hundred fifty dollars. Yeah. He, he wants to join. I have a job. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes or no? Add him, Ron. Yeah. Okay. Add me. Oh, sorry, I missed it. I had a baby a couple weeks ago. I've been busy. <laughs> oh wow! Congrats. Yeah, well, if he gets picked, it will be really funny. Okay, should we spin the wheel or is there anything like... I think everyone is ready, bro. I keep looking at this colorful wheel. Spin it. Hey, okay, let's go. Ah, let's shit. See. How fast is it? God damn it. I'm like nervous. Oh. Tuber Sama. Is Who is that? In here? If, if, he, if he is, unmute yourself, please. Imagine he's not here. I don't hear anything. Ah, uh, shit. <laughs> uh, spin it again. <laughs> That's so funny. Remove now. Let's go. Why, why am I nervous? <laughs> Hall. Who's it's that? Is this? I think I know. Hey, pass, pass to me. Ah! Hey! Jason, are you the one? Who <laughs> He's okay. driving like last time. Okay, who is me? Like I can see the screen now. Yeah. Halim. Ah, Halim. Very good. Who oh, here? Um, Halim. Yeah. Welcome. Wait, wait, wait. a guy chatting with me on Instagram. Halim. No way. I'm just like I, I'm sorry to drive here. It's just that. <laughs> okay. Okay. We. Hustle, hustle, yeah. How are you doing? This yeah, is a real hard. dedication. So. Uh, we will we will contact you. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, thank you so much, guys. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Like you're lagging a little bit, but it's all fine. You got okay. selected. I will uh, send you a message from Discord. Yeah. Um, sure. And let me put it down real quick, like your Discord number as well, so yeah. I don't. And I think so. We don't keep any, everyone waiting. Yeah. After you put it down, we move on to the... Um, yeah, to what yeah. You have so I will contact you on Discord for further uh, steps. Uh, but basically to, to tell, to, to show, to tell, I'd like to explain everyone what we'll be up to. Like we will grow a short channel from scratch, like a brand new channel. Um, insert, of, like use certain strategies that I uh, use for my own short channel. That I will also share some sneak peeks of in this meeting. Um, and get the most results and the most views and the most subs as possible with Halim's uh, new channel, uh, share it with the community, uh, and hopefully you all can learn from it to also uh, get more views on your shorts. Um, but yeah, let's get uh, let's get onto the the, the, store, the shorts and like the key elements of a short to make a short go viral. It, it's it's pretty simple. Uh, like if we if we see what YouTube wants as a platform, it's all what they want is to keep the viewer on the platform as long as possible. Mute Halim. Yeah, Halim, could you maybe mute yourself again? Mute myself, sure. Yes, please. Thank Thanks, you. Man. I'll talk to you on uh, on Discord. So, uh, so yeah, uh, 
you, what YouTube wants basically with all videos, they want the viewer as long as possible on the platform. Um, it's the same with TikTok. That's why TikTok algorithm is so powerful. People are hooked on the app and that's what TikTok wants, but that's also what YouTube wants. Like all the social media platforms are fighting for attention. The one that's, that does this the best will, will win on the long term. So the, the best thing for short is to get our highest viewer attention as possible. So that's pretty straightforward. If you focus on that element, then you will succeed eventually. Like you don't know when, but if your attention is good, you will get more views, period. Um, of course, there are like many, many ways to get higher viewers attention. Uh, like you can play with a lot of things. I will go deeper in it later on. Uh, not, not this thing right now, uh, but later on I will. I will, however, cover three strategies later on in this mastermind where you can like get a real boost in your views pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, with the, with the retention rate, yeah, it's, that's very, that's key, like the most important element there is, but also like you need to make it engaging as, as possible. That also helps with the retention and you need to be, it needs to be fast paced, fast cuts. Like, yeah, you're basically, you need to fry the brain almost of the view. Like it doesn't sound good, but that's how it's supposed to be. It needs to be fast. If the first couple of seconds of the shorts are not engaging enough, people scroll uh, to the next one. So you have like two two seconds at least to get them sucked in. Um, so keep that in mind. If you, uh, the retention of shorts um, and yeah, to, to get the retention high, you have many many tricks. Uh, can I can share one with? Can I share one of the tricks? Yeah, yeah. I really, yeah. I really like can. From the acceleration program or your own trick? Well, I don't know. I'll just share it. So basically. It's a loop thing. I'm, sh I'm sure you guys seen it. It's like when it ends, the next word of the beginning of the short, it feels like it's an endless cycle. So I know two examples, um, Colin and Samir, they do that with their shorts. And also Logan Paul's editor, um, Hayden Hillier Smith, check it out. He does that as well. So when it ends, it feels like they basically make it so it's like a loop. So you can watch it a second time as like an endless thing. So yeah, sorry if I'm giving away the secrets. I yeah. just really wanted to share well, that. Like, <laughs> it gets more deeper than that, but yeah, that's a way to get at least over the hundred percent retention rate. That, that is at least what you want for shorts. If you have like below 20 seconds, that's at least what you need to go viral. Um, but yeah, let's get into the strategies and the strategies are, are pretty straightforward. And it also depends a little bit on your niche, what kind of niche you're in, if you're going into and, and like, because with the niche, you can, like, how I, I call it, like, three, three ways of social hacking, basically. Uh, within your niche, you always have a guy, a big name, uh, where you can, what has, which has a certain reputation, where you can lift on, you know? Like, if you're a new channel, you need to find ways to lift, to, to, to bring yourself up on bigger names, because they already have a reputation, so it's much easier for yourself to go get more views, because you lift off on their reputation. So you have three types of uh, like social hacking. You can do like celebrity hacking. I'm sure in every niche there's a celebrity or an authority in your niche. For example, um, yeah, like for, for the Formula One, for example, you have Lewis Hamilton or Max Verstappen, you know? There's hey, don't, don't, don't <laughs> close my niche. No, as well. But I, I couldn't think of another example. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. So you have like big names in your industry. Uh, everyone uh, searches those names. That's a lot of search volume. Andrew Tate, ex exactly, Ethan. It's true. Uh, the thing is, like, it's very, uh, very crowded in this, the niche right now. I think since you got so hyped up. But like, those names have search volume. So if you're like, maybe it's even good to think in the beginning if you're selecting a niche. Make sure there is a big name within your niche or names uh, that you can use in your uh, shorts, and then you can use different ways to make it more controversial or highlight specific things of those people's lives. Leverage, baby. What did you say? Leverage. Yeah, leverage, exactly. So this whole social hacking thing is basically all based on leverage. So you can leverage celebrities or famous people, uh, but you can also do the same with brands. Like there are a lot of brands people know, uh, those, can you repost? Don't repost anything, guys, please. Yeah. I get so many messages in Discord. If you're in here for the long-term game, uh, make your own unique shorts. You can get footage from interviews or B-roll or like 
like some standard copyright free footage, but make your own shorts. Make like, unique stuff. Yeah, but it's also YouTube knows like if everyone is reposting the same short, YouTube just knows this the exact same video, the exact same frame, the exact same music. They won't push it as hard. So all the time you're like basically wasting your time. Like and it's all the time. Not even as a part of it, like a part of the of the short uh, as a repost, and then another one like an introduction or something. Yeah, you can you, work. you can uh, reuse content, of mm -hmm. course, but in a good way. So it's 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 still again your own unique video, mm -hmm. but you can use maybe a footage of an interview from your uh, from a celebrity. I don't know, it depends on your niche. You can use a smart smart clip of it, then add something new to it, so it has a new angle. It's refreshing. Then also YouTube sees it as a new complete video, so th that's what you want. You don't want a, you re-upload a TikTok video um, because it went viral on TikTok. A lot of people are going to do it. Thank you. Yeah. Sure. Uh, all your questions, leave it at the end. It's fine. Um, so we have the celebrity hacking. We have the brand hacking. So big companies within your industry, you can leverage on. For example, with the Formula One again, we have Mercedes Benz, which I don't know. Hassel, are they performing well? I don't think so. Right? <laughs> Hessel <laughs> probably wants to be like, you know, Ron! <laughs> okay, well, so for example, Mercedes-Benz is not doing so well in Formula One, so a lot of people, like, there's a lot of talk about Mercedes-Benz in Formula One. So you can lift on that topic, because people are talking about it. Can I give an example which worked? Of course. Um, it's a bit controversial, but with Mercedes, um, Last year, of course, uh, Red Bull won, Max Verstappen won uh, a bit in a controversial way. And I just made a video about talking trash about Hamilton. Um, yeah, kind of weird maybe, but what happened is that the video got watched a lot of times over and over again uh, because they were like, what the fuck, I need to watch this again. And they were commenting a lot like, ah, oh, this cryboy, ah, uh, Red Bull fan, stuff like that. <laughs> and, you know, it, it worked because um, you yeah. thought, okay, this video has a lot of comments, a lot of um, engagement, engagement yeah. basically. So, it, like looking at the edge, it does work. Just, just to give you an example, yeah. like of course, it's, it's very wide. No, but it, it, it does work. And like, keep in mind when you're choosing a niche. It's, we will also cover everything how to choose a good niche and like make sure it has a clear audience you can serve. Also for the long term again, like if you're uh, let's cover the questions uh, later on, uh, Carmelo, but it's, uh, I'll cover everything later. Yeah. Um, so make sure when you're choosing a niche, make sure it's also from a long term, an audience you can serve maybe long -term, long form videos in the future. Like if you're really ser serious with YouTube, um, you can make a lot more money of your audience that you're building up first with shorts. Um, so we have the celebrity hacking, brand hacking, and basically the most, it takes more time and effort, but it's basically finding trends within your niche that didn't get covered as, as, as much as other uh, YouTube channels. So uh, search for Google Trends, exploding topics, are, those are all both tools you can use to see what's going on within your, uh, within your niche. For example, uh, I, for, I, I checked Lewis Hamilton on Google Trends and people were looking for his net worth like the last week. Um, there was some sort of contract I think he had to sign, I don't know. So people are looking that around Lewis Hamilton. So if people are looking for it on uh, YouTube, you have, you, on Google Trends, you can select YouTube as well as a filter. Then you know people are looking for it. And since it's a trend, there are not many YouTube shorts about it, but people are looking for it. So if you're the, the supplier will make the YouTube short for YouTube, like YouTube will perfectly match the audience with your short because YouTube is in need of that short and they will just match the audience with it and it will blow up. Like I had a video, uh, blow up in like a million views in less than like 60 minutes, like less than an hour, uh, because it was like something happened. I jumped on the trend right away and I got the short live in like maybe two hours after the thing happened, like very fast. But then you can go really hard. Like I think the total amount of views was like 6 million and it got me like at least 5k or 10k subs. I'm not sure anymore how much, but at least a lot. So it takes a little bit more effort and research. But once you find like some good topics, um, like then you can really blow up. And this again is like creating a, a unique short that's not yet around. If you're creating a unique short that not that's not around and it's based on a trend, you're the only one. You're the like the leader within the niche, and then you get the most views and the most subs. Mm -hmm. So 
those are three tricks you can use basically. So one more example that's happening for, for example right now, Elon Musk, like you can, be equipped, you can combine two things as well. So brands and maybe celebrity. Um, and a trend, like you can combine all three together as well. Elon Musk right now is probably buying Twitter again. So you're lifting off Elon Musk's name, you're lifting off Twitter's name, so a celebrity and a company, and also it's a trend again because everyone's talking about it. If you can like combine those three things, then it's almost certain you're having a viral, especially if you're the first one. So it's important to do your research and when you see an opportunity, act on it right away, make the short, and go for it. And then you can literally blow up in, in minutes. You gotta be quick with it. Yeah, yeah. So those are some of the strategies you can use. Uh, I think, I don't know if anyone has something, George or has something to add, otherwise we can go to the questions. I had this one thing in my head about like what Hessel said about contro uh, controversial thing as well. So when you make something controversial, that really sparks people's curiosity, yeah. you know? When like, when everyone, for example, out of my head, when everyone knows that Mr. Beast is the best at what he does, but if you make a title saying why Mr. Beast is, is, is losing or why Mr. Beast is not winning or something like that, you know, people are going to be like, what, why? Yeah. And so some of them are going to click as well. It's just one kind of like, con uh, how is it? Controversy? No, that's not a word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's controversial. That works, but in yeah. a good way. You can, you can frame it in a different kind of ways. But yeah. like... We will go a lot more deeper in YouTube Shorts the upcoming weeks and months. Like we're now on the background working on the acceleration Shorts acceleration program that Hali, like he selected to to join for free. He will get one-on-one -on -one coaching uh, with the acceleration program. We will also do group coaching. Uh, so like we can all like m make use of the opportunity that will come in 2023. But also it's already happening right now. Like you can make some decent money with YouTube Shorts fund. You can at least like five times your, uh, like your, your spendings on YouTube Shorts. So if you're spending like 100 a month on Shorts, 150, you can easily make a YouTube Shorts fund to make like 500 to 700 dollars easily. Um, but if you have a higher budget, you can also push out more content, make more money now already. Uh, but in 2023, it will be, I think at least double or triple. Uh, yeah. But I don't know yet. We'll see in the, ne in the new year. We're gonna test on Halim, the thing. Yeah basically like run it on him, yeah. see how it performs. Like, the, is it actually working? Because we don't wanna just like, you know, whatever. We wanna actually like be like, okay, we took this guy, look at him, like give him the, the trial version, go through it, yeah. uh, give us feedback, feedback where we can improve and, and so forth. So. Yeah, and also fully transparent. I think it's very important. Like, it is, it's not rigged. Like, we don't know him. And that's also why they, with the spin wheel, I want everyone to be to see, like, yes. it's not bullshit. So, but let's go to the questions. I think a lot of people have questions here that are, like, way more important. You can put up your hand and we can just uh, go one by one. And also, by the way, Hessel is here as well for search-based content. So if you have some specific questions about search-based, he can help you as well. Also, YouTube in general, of course, uh, but YouTube Shorts. It's also, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I got a lot of people reaching out to me on Instagram about um, people also starting a how-to channel. And actually, it has been very, like, low-key for, like, two years now. And Karim is laughing, I see him. <laughs> yeah, he's starting it too. Anyway, um, a lot of people are making the same mistakes with, um, like, videos that aren't really, um, that are basically not within the community guidelines. I actually launched a video on my YouTube channel. Um, I can just talk about it right now, but I can also just share the YouTube channel for people to watch after this meeting maybe. And it's basically about content which is paid and saying that you can get it for free. A lot of people try that. Um, don't do it, even if other people are doing it. Um, I'll leave a link to yeah, so if you want to I, watch I it. I just yeah. got a copyright strike yesterday. Really? I just got a copyright strike yesterday, I swear to God. Yeah, it was so frustrating. A copyright Don't strike. do it, guys. Don't do it, please. Okay. Yeah, don't do it, please. Thanks for that. This is the second one. Ooh. Wow. Tricky. Ooh. Yeah. Just play by the rules. Not good at all. Yeah, play by, yeah, it's... it's yeah, 100%. Avoid, avoid, like... Avoid... Avoid yeah, bad time, George. And, like, don't look for shortcuts. Yeah. Yeah, like, like, you want to play by the rules. You want to be 
good and you want to compete with other people who are doing this. There are no shortcuts. Like, yeah. you want to get good. I used to always look for shortcuts. Trust me. Yeah. I don't look yeah. for shortcuts yeah. anymore. I wake up in the morning and I get down at work. It's the only way to go. I see a question from Jacobo. You can also just unmute yourself and just ask. Maybe, like, have a conversation with us. Maybe, uh... What was the question? You're muted now, so... <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm back. Uh, so I was asking, uh, how do you monetize uh, a shorts channel focused on entertainment, like a Formula One channel on top of the YouTube fund? Yeah, like, I, we have external monetization or...? Yeah, I can. Like, I can maybe, like, we will also cover it in the acceleration program because there are multiple ways. Like, right now, you have the YouTube shorts fund, of course. You need to hit, hit massive views to at least get some decent amount of money. Um, like it really depends on your niche like with uh with the f1 entertainment it's indeed a little bit more uh more difficult but also but also Mostly what you can do is uh if you have like an active community like if you're a pretty big youtube shorts channel you can post community posts for example uh, you can do promotions to youtube videos uh youtube channels uh, you can do maybe to digital products like you you have an audience that's interested in formula one I'm also sure, uh, audience, sorry. I'm also sure there are Formula One channels that are making long form content that need your audience. They will, can basically pay you a couple hundred bucks to do like three or four community posts with a, with a poll, you know, like, uh, mm -hmm. who do you think is going to win the Formula One this year? And you do some names, you insert the link. Um, they get free traffic, not free traffic, but they get traffic from their very relevant audience that you have built up and you can send it to, towards them. And there are many Formula One uh, channels out there in this example, um, so you can reach out to them. But like, it's important that you have some data ready, that you can see, look, how many people are, are checking your channel out, how many views do you have, how many votes are you getting in community posts. Uh, you can also do a shout out on your story. Uh, you can have a story set up also with a link. Um, so those are some methods. Like in entertainment, it's a little bit more difficult because it's you can't really do a digital product or your own product. But that's also an opportunity. Um, so yeah, that's what you can do. But then also twenty. Oh wait. But then also twenty twenty three is is, is, is going to happen soon. What's going to happen soon? The twenty twenty three. The new yeah. monet, The new monetization. Yeah, that's flying. It's crazy. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah, don't go. know yet how much it will be. Uh, the monetization. So it's always like the, probably the external monetization can even go higher, especially if, if you have a high valuable audience on your short channel. You can add, you can earn way more money. Probably outside of uh, the the the, the program. Yeah. So, but are there any more questions? Like raise your hand or unmute yourself. Um, if not, oh, yeah, I have a question. Oh yeah, Felix, go ahead. Then we go can do Ethan. Oh okay. Uh, so, can you go into how the process of making these shorts? Uh, do you instruct your existing long-term video editor uh, to say, hey, can you clip some videos? Uh, from this longer form video and make shorts. Yeah. Um, and then I have a second part to this question. Yes. Yeah. Like, uh, by the way, we will also ev cover everything and how to structure everything in, in the, the program as well. But basically, mm -hmm. it depends a little bit on your niche. Uh, but as I said before, you want to be at least a little bit unique. Uh, so you can create fully custom voiceover if you want to. That, like, I had a guy in the U from the US, uh, he did uh, 12 short recordings for about $15, like 30 seconds, 20 seconds. Then, I, and those shorts uh, had like custom footage from copyright free uh, uh, videos, but also footage from the internet, from YouTube, uh, like nicely cut together, fast paced, nice transitions. And those seem to go viral much more, much more likely because it's more custom. So I would find a guy that can do the video editing, um, do it in your own style that fits with your niche. Look at good performing shorts that also went viral. Look what they did right. We will cover a lot of examples as well. Uh, I can also send you some examples, maybe private. Like I can share info right now as well. Um, but then privately, like I don't want to throw all the information out because yeah, maybe. Of course. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's a little bit like it depends on how you're going to structure your own channel. I would do. I would take a little bit more effort, get a custom voiceover, it's not that expensive, get a good video editor, it doesn't have to be so expensive for shorts, like for $5 you can be, can be golden, 
um, and then just publish it. And yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome, thank you. Yeah. Uh, and so once you, you once you've completed these uh, shorts, uh, is there a negative side to posting them on TikTok, uh, no. Facebook, Instagram, no. and just? I would uh, like, especially if you're uh, you're building like a community and audience, post it on TikTok and Instagram Reels. Like it's the same format. You already made video; it's your own video. Post it. Like it's free free traffic basically. So just post it. Yeah. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, you're welcome, man. Ethan. All right, thanks guys. Um, so I had a question for you just about, I guess I found a channel I think that's on shorts that seems like it's been taking off and they have a pretty consistent just, you know, I guess format you could say, right? It's the same thing every time except different variations on it. You know, like you could say a specific same subject, different person, right? Yeah. Um, what would you say is worth finding a channel like that that's worth to maybe not totally just rip off, but emulate? Um, it looks to me like their last, they're probably their top 25 videos are between 100K and five and a half million on shorts. So that would be the range. I don't know if it's worth, you know, going into something like that, or I can be more specific if you want. Yeah, like what's the actual sense. question? If you can like reproduce their kind of shorts or like what's... Yeah, because I think they'd be pretty easy to reproduce. Yeah. Um, I mean, and make my own, right? Yeah. Is, is that something worth doing? I guess a secondary follow on that would be, you know, looking at doing some, let's say, search-based versus browse, as you guys have talked about. Yeah. Um, outside of the trend type stuff you, you brought up earlier, it, what would you say the role is there for a short channel versus like a longer form, more traditional? Well, so I'm not sure if I get the question, but like okay. you, you've, you've checked, you've seen a short channel performing really well, or George, you're, yeah. you're getting it? Steal, but have your take on it. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Good art, good artist, yeah. good artist copy, great artist steal. Steal, but don't yeah. fucking copy the link, download YouTube short, no. and then repost that thing. No, make no, your, mean, give that yeah. to your yeah. editor or whoever, like break it down and then just yeah. like construct it sure. and see how it is. And you okay. can even make it better, you know? That's yeah. That's a possibility. Uh, and the good thing is, if you found a channel, it's also a proof of concept that it worked. Yeah. But you need to watch out, like maybe the shorts, that are like three, four months old, maybe mm -hmm. they were uh, getting hits based on a trend and the trend died right now. So okay, that's true. Make sure to- So look at what they're doing now too versus- Yeah, so check okay. Google Trends maybe if it's a specific topic and like okay. otherwise you will be making shorts on a topic that's not that going with right anymore. Yeah, is there any way to, that you guys know if to look at a YouTube video, like if it's not your channel, right? If you're just looking at a random, like if I'm looking at your guys' videos, let's yeah. say, is there a way to look and say, here's rough, View, view counts of this video over time. Do you know what I'm talking about? Uh, so like like you said with the trend, right? Social, so, social Blade can show the whole profile. The whole channel. Uh, VidIQ. Okay. VidIQ will do well, it. Okay, I'll check that out. When you have a video, uh, I have the paid version, by the way. If you go to a video, you can find the graph of the growth per week or per day. So you can see okay. if the video is still getting a decent amount of views. Okay, because that's something I haven't been able to figure out. They have a couple that just went viral, and the rest, like, is the average of their videos 50k views, but do they just have a few that went viral, or or are they just building up views over time? That's all. So, okay, thanks guys, I appreciate that. You're welcome, Alim, Mr. Short. <laughs> you're uh, you, you raise your hand. He's probably really tall. <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, yeah, so, um, yeah, obviously, first of all, thanks a lot for obviously, uh, randomly selecting me. Of course. Um, generally, I just want to say, first of all, is that, um, just on from what you were saying earlier, is that, you know, these guys don't know me whatsoever. I actually only found this community only 10 days ago. So I feel really lucky to be in the LGBT Pirate Experiment. Mate, you're lucky. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> take a bit as well. You're lucky the first guy out there. Where are you from? Uh, uh, from the UK. Okay. Yeah, didn't you hear that, George? You can hear that easily. Listen, I have to double check. Let's go on. <laughs> um, but yeah, generally, my question is obviously in terms of the shorts, um, where do you generally find that balance between the quality and quantity of the shorts? You know, yeah. I'm sure obviously, you know, you can spend a lot of money in terms of obviously making sure the quality is right with the freelancers, but at the same time, obviously you don't want that to be money going down the drain if it doesn't succeed. So True. there's obviously this testing, which is involved in that process. But yeah. Yeah, 
what, what do you feel about the quantity over quantity? Good yeah, question. Um, quantity over quantity. For, for now, uh, YouTube Shorts is a quantity game uh, because YouTube is in need of a short form content. That, that's what that's it. What what is, it is right now? Um, but like, you need to find a good freelancer that knows what he's doing. Uh, that you can basically leave leave him. He knows his job, and then just push out more quantity right now than quality. Um, it also maybe depends a little bit on your niche. For example, if you're doing that hor a horror stories niche, I don't know, you can make shorts about it very nicely. It takes more time to make a story, and of course then quality is more important. If you're in an entertainment niche, it's a much more competitive. Uh, you need to make engaging shorts, and, but you also need the volume a lot. So it depends a little bit on the niche, uh, but for now, YouTube is in need of shorts. So quantity at the moment wins it, in my opinion. And also, I would add to that, quality is relative. Yeah. I made a short one time in like, I don't know, five minutes. No editing. Just literally, I was like, let me post something. So I go to the YouTube app and I just record. I think the short is like, how much YouTube paid me for 4,000 subscribers? I swear to God, I made it in like less than five minutes. Just recorded my screen from a phone. This is how many views I got. This is how many subscribers. Posted it. I think five or 10,000 views just poof, straight up in like less than 15 minutes. And yeah. then also another one I did was it got 45,000 views. Uh, it's a short about Morgan Freeman giving advice on dating. Yeah. That's the entertainment niche. So then you know, like, you and it's literally, it and it's literally just a clip of Morgan Freeman uh, giving uh, in, an interview. And then the guy asks him about women or something. And then it's just, and then like, I just literally took it, cut it up, put a little bit of music on top of it, 45,000 views. Yeah. I want you to keep in mind though, like you, you need to have a little bit of a long-term vision for your shorts channel. Like if you're starting out with entertainment, for example, uh, how would the guy, the name again, uh, the, the actor you just mentioned? Morgan Freeman. Yeah. Morgan Freeman. Um, like if you're getting a lot of views for old Margaret Freeman, it's great. You're getting a lot of subs, but your audience is interested in probably memes, funny stuff. Morgan uh, Freeman. So it's much harder to convert eventually that audience into maybe like you can make long form content, but then you can probably need to make long form content. That's also in the entertainment niche. Yeah. Like, you need to think if, if that's the way you want to go. So before making a short, Halim, we're going to sit uh, one on one. We're go it's going to all to be taken care of. But uh, those are things to keep in mind. Just make sure that your audience is like, is, is, is compact. Don't make the mistake that your boy Georgie did from switching from make money online to yoga. Yeah. Don't, don't do that, okay? Yeah. Trust me, I've learned it the hard way. Yeah. So I hope it answered your question, uh, Ali. Yeah, thank you. Perfect. Uh, I don't know if there are any, any more questions. We have some any questions. Yeah, there are questions in the chat. In the oh, chat. Uh, Alexi, I don't know if I pronounced it right. Of course I know um, Alexi. Um, sorry, I can't speak right now. For search-based tutorial channels, is it a good idea to jump into a popular niche, niche that is well covered already? And then Tashin, I don't know, again, you can check out the competition of that niche on VidIQ. If it's low, you can jump into that niche. So I don't know, uh, can you um, turn your mic on? Tashin, Okuda? Whatever, answer the, answer the first question. Okay, um, sh short story, VidIQ is wrong. And it's not available. So the data you see on VidIQ, I don't know where they base it on, but it's not right. So like you can, the only way I use VidIQ is to guess, is just to get IDs flowing through my head, like always checking them again using the YouTube search bar because that's based on real data. But just looking at the, the numbers VidIQ or TubeBuddy give, gives you, that, that's wrong. That's going to give you I had this one thing. So someone in the Discord community asked this question. It's like, when Hessel mentioned that, you said uh, you kind of agreed, but then in the other video, blah, blah. So I just wanted to clarify. I think the way this works is that uh, vidIQ is connected via API to Google Keyword Planner. Mm -hmm. They get the search volume from there, but the score you get on vidIQ, man, someone's microphone is crazy. Jacopo, you got, you got, a, you got, a, you got trains. Yeah, I you got, got a train. You got a train going on there, bro. <laughs> uh, but, you know, so, so they pull out the, the data from Google API. I think so. I might be wrong. 
like the search volume, but then the competition, no, and the competition as well. So the search and the competition, but the little, um, the little number you get, like the green, the red, like high, uh, bad keyword, good keyword, that's them doing it themselves. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Like I, I also was a big fit, fit IQ user in the beginning, uh, but I was just putting some random keywords in there that what like nobody was searching it. Like I can't even mention my keyword, like my sentence. Don't actually. do it. <laughs> but it had like 7,000 views and the whole question was like, so yeah, yeah, I don't know. For ideas, you can use it, of course, to get to again give you some ideas. But don't just look at the data from there because also competition. They give you like a green or a red mark if the competition is good. Like, should you make this video? Where did they get the data from? Often, if you look for a certain keyword and you look at uh, videos in a similar niche, niche that's that's um, listed below, they are always wrong. Always wrong. Nothing compared to the topic you search for. So that basically tells me that VidIQ is it's just inaccurate. And, and also based on my experience, it is. And it's yeah. not like and it's not like if you find a green keyword and you make a video, you <clears throat> you pop. And if you make a video on a red one, you like you don't pop. Like you can make no. a you can make a great video on a super competitive keyword, and then if if the people watching it love it, well, you're gonna rank, mm -hmm. right? But I don't know, by the way, if this really answers Alexi's question because this was like, um, uh, in other words, how to find a niche that is relatively easy to rank in but has enough volume to actually make some ads and money. That's actually what is changing the last months because competition is getting um, like I bigger just and think bigger. Two words: easy and money. <laughs> I mean, that's easy problem. money. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're right, Ron. Um, so also for tags, then uh, uh, for the videos, VidIQ is not reliable. Like to find the keywords for the tags. Like, tags. Yeah, that that is good for tags. You can use it, but tags aren't important anyway today. Mm -hmm. Like five years ago, tags were everything, but now tag is just just the thumbnail, the title, and what is being said in the video. YouTube mm -hmm. also checks that, and it's way more important than the tags. But you can use FitIQ for text or rapidtext.io. I can type it in the chat. Yeah. But watching some interviews with Mr. Beast and with the guy who's responsible, it's like, yes, like title is important and thumbnail is important, but like the underlying thing is the video quality. Like, vi okay. YouTube, yeah, YouTube, mm -hmm. YouTube is a video platform. So you got to get your retention right. Retention, yeah. thumbnail, and title, three things. Click and watch, click and watch. Yeah. I think uh, that's it, right? No more questions? Who? Oh, Kareem. Who had a question? Yeah. Yo guys, Ron, I, I, have, a, I have a question about the, the, the short channels. Uh, I've, seen, I've seen a channel yesterday, uh, I will make sure to tap it in, it's called Omar Raja, something like this. The thing that he, that he like he's doing, it, like he talking about like the, the hottest trend right now. Like uh, last week it was the Sidemen charity match and stuff like that. He talked about that. And after that, the next video talked about uh, the NFL and stuff like that. And he keep getting views. So my question straight away, is it you need to focus on one specific niche or you can do the same thing like this guy did and he get like a high amount of views? I think uh, it's, like, it's a personal brand, personal brand. Uh, channel. Yeah, it, it kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And then it doesn't matter. Like yeah, the, the channel brand. is about him. So everything he does is okay. All right. But like the short that he, that he, that he's doing, like he's like he's using his voice yeah. and stuff like that with good editing and stuff like that. I don't know. I'm, yeah, I'm just asking like, is it yeah. necessary to have a, a niche down channel? Or, or like because the, like that channel is about him, so he has all the freedom to make all the videos, and he's jumping on all the trends. So it's basically also a niche because it's him himself is, is a niche. Like it's a very niche because he's the only guy that is like him. So maybe a personal channel is the most niche you ever can ever go. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. So it's still yeah. Still. All right. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Rob. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. The best um, the best investment you can do is to invest in yourself. Ooh, a little, nice words. A little cliche, uh, a little cliche, cliche quote for you guys. No, but that's true. Yeah. 
Yeah. But uh, I think uh, we can end it here. I want to thank... Uh, oh, Mihai. Okay, let's go. Final one, guys. Then oh, we, we have, we have no, them no, no, coming no, in, no, bro. Okay. All right. Let's first go to Mihai and then... Uh, Okay, guys, so my question is, uh, can you re-upload your, your old videos? Is it allowed to do that on YouTube? Old your videos? Form, your old? Yes, my long-form old videos. Give a little bit more context, what do you mean? So, I mean the news niche, and the, there, there are a lot of channels who re-upload their old news from three months ago, and they make a lot of views. I, is it allowed to re-upload them? It is allowed. Okay. But what kind of news is that yeah, if they're... You can get in trouble for uh, deleting a, a video and re-uploading it. Mm, no, probably not. It's still your own video. Like, it's your copyright. It's... Yeah. Okay. Mihai, but what kind of news is that if you can re-upload them from, from yeah, three well, months ago? Yeah. What kind of people are interested Elon in Musk this? Elon buying Twitter. Months? That's again... Oh, Elon Musk buying Maybe. Twitter? No. Do you mean no. like in a separate channel? No, in the, in the same channel, in the same channel. That should be totally fine. Yeah, but then like, think about if everyone is just gonna be like, think, think of a scenario where everyone is reposting the same video over and over again. I mean, they are not reposting uh, all of the news, just the, the best performing ones. Ah, you can try it, maybe repackage it, I don't know. Try, I mean, try, if you get into trouble, it's not our fault. Yes, <laughs> there is no trouble. Well, but you can't I'm get into that, I'm sure. <laughs> Okay, thank you guys. You're welcome. Um, I, ha and I saw a hand from, for just, from Justin, but I think he left. Yes, uh, can you guys hear oh. me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, hi, Justin. Uh, so I reached out to George and Ron. Thanks again for the replies. Um, I wanted to just kind of formally ask everybody here because there's a lot of experience here. Um, I've been doing this for about two months, um, and I was curious if I could get some more information. I just heard a bunch of different, like, like, opinions on this and as far as like reusing content on YouTube like I get that that's how cash cow works you have to like re you know you only can use a certain amount of seconds um, and that's what I do I use seven seconds or less I have a voiceover and it's the whole thing but I was just curious if there's anybody who has like some concrete knowledge on what not to do I guess um, because I'm a little confused on like because I've heard a few opinions that you actually can get rejected for doing what I'm doing so I'm a little this is obviously not a free investment, so I'm just curious what you guys think. Yeah, just send me the your channel. Disclaimer or the fair use disclaimer. You need to check that one out as well. But as far as I know, it's the seven second rule indeed. Like, don't use content longer than that. And what you can do, in my experience, uh, for example, if you have something from an interview or a voiceover, I don't know, that the voice can be like up to ninety seconds. Like the shorter, maybe better. But the footage. Okay. So. Keep the footage, like the, the actual footage, below seven seconds, maybe six to be sure, uh, but the voice can be longer, like 90 seconds. Um, okay. And make sure to, to edit it nicely, do transitions, do uh, text uh, layovers, uh, do voiceovers. A uh, voiceover may be a little bit difficult. Now with a clip you can, of course, if you're not using the original voiceover. Then you should be fine. A lot of channels are doing it this way. Uh, I did it, like I've uploaded. I think about 60 or 70 videos this way and no copyright strike at all. Um, okay. And you also see it when uploading the video right away. YouTube scans is pretty quick. Yeah. Um, so I think you should be fine using those rules. And, and so just to be clear though, like, is there something, so like I said, I use the seven second rule or less and then I have a voiceover on the entire thing. Um, people have seen my channel and say that I'm, I'm pretty good, but I'm just, is there anything that like people have done lately that gets rejected that maybe people aren't thinking of? I'm just trying to think of like add my face as like the trailer and I've thought about doing that. Yeah, but, maybe someone else in this, in this group that has a copyright strike based on this. I don't. But. Well, I mean, I can just add one thing. Um, okay. I don't know if it's because like, I think you reached out to me and I think I spoke to you today. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, I to, and I told you to send me your channel. It's not like I'm going to steal it or anything. I'm not going to take a look and I'll tell you what's up. But um, for example, I did a reaction video on okay. uh, on Yuri's video, him going from zero to a millionaire. And if you guys take a look at that video, I mean, I was really lazy. It's like he's he's talking. He like I played the video for like two, three, like not, okay, not two, three, maybe like for two minutes or something. And then I do a little kind of insert of me reacting, and then I continue playing it. And it's like a twenty-something minute video, I think. And it's fine. It's uh, I'm monetizing it. So 
Yeah. Just don't, I think like, think in terms, like think like YouTube is thinking, you know? YouTube doesn't want you to just like take content and repost, right? And it, does, like, right. it, it wants you to add your unique twist to it, whatever it is, right? Yeah. So yeah, I think the best way for all of us here, like when you're worrying about strikes and stuff, just like put yourself in the, in the shoes of YouTube. How would you think if you would be like doing that, right? That answers a lot of it, questions. And I meant more about like not copyright, but as far as like when you get rejected from the monetization program, is there anybody in this group right now that's been rejected at all? No. no. Yeah, I got rejected uh, like a long time, like three months ago on a different channel. It was not reused. Was it the content? same strategy we're talking about, or were you doing something? No, else? it was reused content and repetitive content. But it, but it was because I had a, a Spanish channel and also an English channel, and YouTube didn't saw it was the the English channel that I also owned. So okay, differently. Um, but I think you should be fine, man. If you if okay. you're doing it your own way, you just use the seven second rule, have the voiceover. A lot of channels are doing it, so I think you shouldn't be worried about it. Cool. Plus, you, plus, Thank you, guys. I plus you seem sharp. You seem like you know what you're doing. <laughs> Are there any said? more people? I'm saying, I'm saying, you seem sharp. It seems like you, you know what you're doing. So it's, it's, it's like I, th I'm th I think you'd be fine. Don't worry. Don't stress it. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome. Hessel, final words. Are there any more people having this, like um, using content, some second rule, all that stuff? Nah. I personally don't. I do. Nah. But my yeah. feed, my video editors do. Like I don't. But. <laughs> okay. All right. Wait, Hessel, you you when you guys do cash cow, you guys do a different way. You guys don't use other content. Is, what am I? What am I picking up here? Yeah, uh, I'm only using all the all the channels I have. I only use original content, which is not like me going outside filming myself or whatever. It's uh, screen recordings with a voice. Oh, I see. So that's okay. that's easy because it's always, um, you know. It's just like a hundred percent. Yeah. You're like you're yeah, exactly. doing that versus just taking it and now you gotcha. Okay, cool. Awesome. Uh, that's just, uh, there's just some how to videos. Yeah. And you can do it. Yeah. Correct. I see for the next Ross we need to invite Yuri. So uh, we're going to fix that. Where is he? Let me, let me call him. Yeah. He's probably no, 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 not. He's in the Netherlands. <laughs> <He's>, uh... <laughs> Whatever. We'll, 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 we'll try to get Yuri here on the next mastermind. Yeah. We'll fix then. Let's end the call here. I want to thank everyone for joining the mastermind. Next one will be announced soon again. And Halim, I don't know if you're still here. I hope so. Uh, I will stay in I will contact you and you can, everyone can uh, check his results. He starts from scratch. So uh, you can all see how it will perform. Yeah. Keep so, an eye on Halim. Yeah. Keep an eye on him.